Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. Just finished our prayer meeting. We had 17 people, eight from online and eight here, and I was the odd one out. I prayed this evening with the people online and let the people in the sanctuary pray together. Had a lot of prayer requests. Um, grieving the loss of some people, friends, family that have died. We uh, praying for blessings of people that have been cleared and healed and moving in, in a better direction after difficult surgeries and uh, procedures. And just general concern, just general concern for people. Um, one of the last things that we said was pray for those that are going to be experiencing a hurricane tonight. And we also mentioned the windstorm in Iowa, the fires in California. And, and Lord, we just don't know what the Lord is doing, but we pray that people would recognize that he is the Lord of all. And whatever he is allowing, he has a purpose for. And it's, it's not easy to uh, accept. Um, we're in the middle of an election year. I don't want to be political. I watched a little bit of last week, and I'm watching some of the things this week. And it's amazing to me that people from both sides of the aisle can comment on the same exact happening, and it sounds exactly opposite. And I think I just pray, as I prayed for the very beginning of the COVID-19 challenge, that we would know truth, that we wouldn't listen to what other people are telling us about truth, but we would know truth. I have issues that are dear to my heart, uh, pro-life stance, uh, freedom of religion, and, and, and also how we treat Israel. Those are three things that I look for when I consider politics. And uh, you can decide. You can decide how important they are to you and decide where which side seems to be making more sense in those areas. I try not to be political, but I do talk about those issues. I bring that up because tonight we're going to look at a passage in John 17, and we're going to be talking about how we're people of the word, not of this world. That's what Jesus focused on in, in a, a certain section of, of, of John 17. Let me pray before we look into that. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the truth of your word, the fact that you've, been, you've given us your word and that we can trust your word to be our truth as I've been challenging people to read the book of Proverbs regularly, instead of listening to the experts and the political pundits talk about how to observe this world, you gave Solomon insight. And there's so many things in Proverbs that can keep us just balanced in the way we look at things. There's nothing new under the sun. Solomon saw the same condition of people. We may have different ways of expressing it, but there's a sin problem. There's goodness as people are created in your image. And, and even if they're not saved, there, there are times when they can do the right thing. But Lord, we all need to know the truth of your gospel, that the only way we can have the power of the spirit to truly lead us to do the right thing is by being your children, by accepting Jesus Christ as our personal savior. I thank you, Jesus, that you pray for us. And as we look at this prayer that you prayed for your disciples and also us, that we would be encouraged tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The passage is John 17, 14 through 18. Jesus said, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. There's a number of things I want to look at in this passage. First of all, we have a need for God's word. We have that need and it's seen because Jesus gave the disciples the word. We know in John chapter one, he is the word. He is the truth. And so, but we also have God's word, the, the Bible, that, that keeps us knowing him as the word of God. Jesus gave his word, the Father's word to the disciples. And then he later says, sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. That word sanctify just means set apart. To, to just be in a place where you're not caught up with all the difficulties that you see in the world. You could be set apart from them. 
doesn't mean your things are all going to be perfect. Doesn't mean we're going to be exempt from difficulties. It just means we can be set apart in, in how we handle them. We can be different. Our, that it's only going to happen as we recognize our need for God's word. Then we see twice, Jesus says, the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Then you go down to verse 16, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. When Jesus repeats something, we should pay attention. You recognize we're not of the world. You may be watching these uh, conventions and thinking, oh, I'm hoping this side wins, I'm hoping this side. That's stuff of the world. It's not that we shouldn't be involved. It's not that we shouldn't be informed. We shouldn't vote. We should do that. But our hope is not in either political party. Our hope is not in our leaders. Our hope is in the Lord. And I pray every year that truth would be known and that God would be gracious and give us good leaders. We are not of this world. So as you see this world fall apart, you don't have to be torn down with it. You may be impacted by it because we live in the world, but you, you're not of the world and you need to know that. Following Jesus means we are not of the world. And then in verse 15, Jesus' prayer for his disciples, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Recently saw some clips of, of protesters going into a restaurant demanding that people make a sign to show their support of what they were doing. I, it, it used to be, we're afraid that they're taking away our freedom of speech. Now they're saying, if you don't say what we want you to say, you're in trouble. We need to be kept from the evil one. The evil one has an agenda, and that agenda would be to destroy us. One of the people prayed tonight that we would have the words if that happened to us, that we would have the right thing to say and have the courage to do the right thing. We don't have to bow to the, to the evil of this world. We can stand strong with a testimony that glorifies God and admits, yes, I'm a believer, and I believe God has a plan. For each one, but even someone who's your enemy, God has a plan. So we need to remember Jesus' prayer for his disciples. Not that we're going to come out of the world, but he, we would be kept from the evil one. And then verse 18, why are we still in the world? If we're not of the world, why are we still here? Verse 18, Jesus says, as you sent me, Father, into the world, so I have sent them into the world. We do have a purpose to be here, to share truth, to share love, to make a connection and show people that there's a better way to think of life than maybe the, the, the way of the evil one. But just thinking about the four things we've just talked about, we need to remember our need for God's word. Don't think that you can go into the world at each day without letting God's word wash you with it, let it come to you and, and, and recognize that there's truth that can help you be steady when the world is falling apart. Remember, you're not of this world. Things in this world will impact you, but they don't have to drag you down. You're not of this world. You don't have to go along with the evil of this world. You can stand separate from it. And even though the consequences of other people's sin may impact you, you can recognize you live for another world, a heavenly world. Remember, Jesus is praying for you. We had a couple weeks ago, we said, I'm on Jesus' prayer list. Jesus is praying for us. We need to be encouraged by that. And then remember our purpose in the world. Today we had lifeline screening in our church. 40 different, 40 plus people showed up, in it, including the staff. And they pray that we were good hosts to them. We put out some literature. Uh, I'd say five to seven of the daily breads that we put out were gone, and five to seven of a little booklet by the Gideons were taken. We just we're here for a purpose. We're letting our community know that we want to serve the community. We also want to up, lift up the name of the Lord and, and know that there is a truth that can set them free from the things of this world. Let me close in prayer. I thank you, Father. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your truth. Jesus, you came full of grace and truth. Grace is love, but it's also power. It's power to protect us from the evil one. It's power to help us to have the strength to say no to sin. We're not going to be perfect, but we can grow in the truth of your word and know that you have a plan for us. Help us to be testimonies. Where there are people that uh, are hurting the testimony of Christ, 
We pray that you would bring forgiveness to them, help them to carry themselves in a way that, that will still point people to the truth of your word. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus, for your willingness to come and live and, and, and send out your disciples to a lost and dying world, for your willingness to die and rise again so that we could have uh, salvation. We thank you, dear Holy Spirit, for your striving with us, convicting us of our sin, convicting us of faith so that we would come to you in the only way that pleases you, by faith. I pray that that faith will result in good works so that we can fulfill the purpose that you have for us in this world. Bless us, Father. Pray for those that are going to be going through a hurricane tonight. We pray that you'll protect lives and help people to come to see your mighty power and know that there is still a loving, loving people in a world filled with hate that can help them through this time. We thank you, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray that you remain well and that you are blessed.